Welcome to the video, guys! I hope you're having a very good day. I know I am, because I finally got round to water cooling the GTX 1080 Ti's. Yes, I've sold my GTX 1080 normals, which some of you may or may not know. And I know some of you love technology and computer stuff, so I thought I would show you a little bit of what's been going on. So it turns out you can actually fit a GTX Titan X Pascal Edition water block from EK on to the GTX 1080 Ti. So rather than waiting for an official GTX 1080 Ti water block, I thought the only difference is it doesn't say GTX 1080 Ti on the water block. So I don't mind. And it was cheaper to get the Titan X water block, which still fits because it's basically the exact same card. There's very little, if any, difference between uh, both editions of the card. There's just a very slight variation on the PCB, but it still actually fits the same water block. So I was like, yeah. May as well just get that one. And so here you see my new setup. Uh, I put it in slow motion because um, I only recorded a few seconds because I was in the middle of testing. That's why there's uh, a bit of kitchen roll in there to uh, try and catch any droplets of coolant should it happen. I've never had it happen uh, during a test, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Never assume anything. And so, moving on to stats, I ran the benchmark for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Maximum everything in 2K, the only thing has changed, anti-aliasing was just standard, probably like times two, and motion blur was off because nobody likes motion blur, pretty much, that I know of. And obviously the, the results there speak for themselves, that is a lot of FPS, a lot. And it's obviously really good for me for recording. Now, I know some naysayers are going to be like, Why are you water cooling a founder's edition of the GTX 1080 Ti? Why would you do that? Why would you do that, bro? It's so stupid. Well, I'll give you a few reasons, actually. Uh, one reason was um, I already got the GTX 1080 Ti's. Why would I wait and then get some of the enhanced editions? I don't need the extra power. I don't need to be using more power to power the cards. I don't want them to be more powerful and require more cooling and more fans because I wanted to make something that is quiet and powerful. So I water cooled the cheapest option, which is a normal GPU, not changed, no different PCBs, no needing a special designed water block, just bog standard. And I can still overclock this anyway if I wanted to. I would just not be able to add any extra power beyond the normal overclocking capabilities of the card. So there, there's a few reasons. I wanted it to be quiet. I didn't want it to be having extra fans or even afterwards getting water cooling and then having to turn the fans up, you know, to, to mitigate the extra power being being. Used. Also, I ran Fermac, which is a great little program for uh, stress testing. And you can see the temperature results on there. And I also ran in 2K standard settings, Time Spy DX12 3D Mac benchmark, which is a fantastic benchmark to watch, by the way. And again, some fantastic FPS results. Uh, some great points there at the top and uh, yeah I just I, I mean I'm just overwhelmed guys because if I if I output at 4k the difference in the FPS is negligible it's like five FPS difference these are some stonking cards and if you'd like to see some 4k tests then do let me know I'm quite happy to turn out a few benchmarks but soon I'm gonna be doing the Witcher in 4k and hopefully get a recording of that not an FPS benchmark thing, but just some general gameplay in 4K because it's a very, very pretty game. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You need to press that like button. You need to smash the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in a gaming video or something along those lines very soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.